This is the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola in the 3D Security and Training Academy studios. There is no finer group of people than those who have that servant's heart and are willing to lay down their lives for this country. Sarah Palin loves our flag, the great symbol of our exceptional country. She also loves our military. Now, there's an amazing group that is promoting another flag all across our country. Their goal is to establish a tangible national symbol of gratitude as a visible public reminder to all Americans that perpetually recognizes all military lives lost in defense of our national freedoms. Today, we'll talk more about the Honor and Remember flag with George Lutz, the Honor and Remember founder. Sarah Palin dissects the Hillary Clinton candidacy. The governor highlights Obama's penchant for smear tactics. A surprising apology comes Palin's way. A brand new installment of Liberty and Legacy with Tamara Colbert is on the way from Texas. And just ahead, our latest edition of Steel Resolve with Sarah Steelman in Missouri. Welcome to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. The Palin Update is sponsored by 3D Security and Training Academy. Learn more at 3dsta.com. We love old glory. The red, white, and blue of the beautiful American flag means so much. Other flags also have great significance. The Gadsden flag has become a symbol of tea partiers and common-sense patriots everywhere. And now, another flag that means a lot is honoring our military in a special way. We are excited to learn more about it right now with George Lutz of Honor and Remember. George, welcome to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Well, we appreciate you being here and what you're doing. Let's tell our listeners... Exactly what is the Honor and Remember flag? Well, uh, that's a big question with a <laughs> long-winded answer, but I will, uh, can, I, can I start by, by giving a little history? Absolutely. Give us the basics and we'll delve into the specifics. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, almost 10 years ago, on December 29th of 2005, uh, my son Tony was killed in Iraq um, by a sniper. And I went through an emotional upheaval, if you will, because, you know, it's not something that parents are supposed to go through, you know, having to bury their kids. And, you know, of course, war has a way of, you know, taking lives. And, and, uh, but it's not something you can plan for. So, you know, as a part of the grieving process that I was going through, I was looking for a way that America remembers you know, the men and women who gave their lives. You know, I was just a dad looking for something to embrace, you know, something to make me feel better. And, you know, honestly, I, you know, after several years of kind of looking for that, that kind of comfort, I realized that, you know, as, you know, as American citizens, there really wasn't anything for us to remind us that, uh, that there was loss, that there, that our military was, you know, doing all for our freedoms. And, and so the honor and remember flag came, you know, out of a, you know, a, a upheaval of, of loss really to, to give Americans a way to appreciate the sacrifice, not be somber or sad or, you know, be uh, negative, but to appreciate the fact that men and women are losing their lives and it's for us. It's so we're able to do the things that we do in a free country. And so the I Remember flag was simply created as a national symbol of remembrance and a way, a simple way of saying thank you in a tangible, you know, visible expression. And the flag, the short sure. And the flag, George itself. I know um, specifically each part means something of great significance. So let's talk about that a little bit. People who may have not seen the flag yet, we're going to have it all over the website, of course. And if they're listening to us right now, they're probably looking at it. But the red field, first of all, tell us what that's about. Sure. There's there's a number of symbols and symbolism that are a part of this flag. So it's not just a a, sim, a sample of colors. Uh, it contains a, a red and white field, uh, uh, almost split, a 75-25. Uh, the red field stands for the sacrifice of blood shed for our country. You know, it's American flag red. There's a white field below that stands for the purity of that sacrifice because each one of these 
uh, service men and women went over on their mission with a pure heart uh, with the idea of, of coming home and, and saying to their families and their friends, don't worry, we know what we're doing, we'll be back. In the center of that flag, uh, spanning both of those colored fields, is a blue star. And that blue star goes back to actually World War I, when a solid blue star was hung on the windows and doors of families who had someone out in the fight. And there could be one, two, three stars on a, on a banner, and that would indicate the number of family members that they had that were uh, deployed. If one of those family members were to die, then they would overlay that blue star with a gold star. And that's where you, you, we get the term gold star families. And so on the honor member flag is that blue star and a gold star overlaying that blue star. Underneath those two stars is a folded American flag. This country was built on one folded flag at a time. And that flag, in the minds of most everyone who understands you know, military symbolism, knows that a folded flag is handed to a family at the memorial of their loved one. Above that folded flag is a series of flames, and they are a reminder, an eternal reminder, that we will never forget. Uh, it is something that we often say, but it's not something that we always follow through. And underneath all of that symbolism are the words, honor and remember. We will always honor their sacrifice, and we will remember them individually by name. And that is the collective grouping of what that symbolism stands for. Now, you mentioned your son who gave the ultimate sacrifice. I tried to instill in my, my children a sense of patriotism. And, and uh, out of my five children, uh, my son Tony decided that you know, he would take that selfless call. It's amazing. You know, Governor Palin mentions it all the time. I mean, we talk about the heroes and this military, but the fact that this is a volunteer military, and especially in this time of war and terrorism that really isn't going away, you just have to keep fighting it for these young kids really to go out there and uh, volunteer on their own for us and for the freedoms and liberties that they see that sometimes a lot of politicians do not. It's it's really inspiring beyond belief, and you know that's why we really appreciate what you're doing. How, how can people learn? Learn more about it and maybe get a flag of their own. Sure, absolutely. I mean, this is a flag not just you know for the families to recognize them, but it is for all of us to fly um, in appreciation. So, if a family sees this being displayed or flown at a business or your home uh, or organization, you know it speaks to them that somebody remembers and it means something directly because of all of that symbolism you know, that I explained. But the website is honorandremember.org, all spelled out, honor, H-O-N-O-R-A-N-D-R-E-M-E-M-B-E-R.org. And the story is there. There's, there's really hundreds of, of, uh, of, of photographs and pick and, uh, uh, and, uh, just items of, of understanding of the flag and what we're doing and the symbolism and the presentation. Um, uh, so there's, there's plenty to, to keep somebody busy if they want to learn about the symbolism and, and what we're doing. Um, one of the things, Kevin, I might mention is that as an organization, it's not just about getting the flag recognized as one of the most recognizable symbols in America, but also to make a presentation to every family who has lost a loved one in the history of our country, but primarily we're focusing on those families uh, that are spanning generations, you know, that are still with us. And we present a personalized version of the flag, which is handmade um, with the, the loved one's name, the date that they died, and where they were when they died. And it's a very striking a presentation that we do publicly across the country nearly every day somewhere in the country. And this is to, to say thanks to these families specifically so that they know that we have not forgotten their loved one's name. And I would think every time a flag is presented or every time, you know, you see one, not just in your work, but if you see someone else with one, I mean, that's your son there. I mean, that's your son remembered and being honored. 
That's exactly right. Every one of those flags has a personal message, regardless if it's personalized or not. It has a personal message to that person that sees it, that has experienced that loss. Um, it's, it's a powerful, powerful symbol, Kevin. Uh, one of the things that I might mention is that we have been working across the nation on legislation to, to have this actually become the adopted symbol of remembrance across our land. And right now we have 20 specific states that have legislated the honor and remember flag to be their state symbol of remembrance. So that's quite a significant accomplishment. And of course, you know, we hope that all 50 states will eventually uh, be on board with adoption. I know our friends Madison Rising are supporting your cause, and uh, yeah, they were at one of your events recently and uh, you know, displayed the flag and all over their social media campaigns and whatnot. So hopefully, you know, working together, we can all get this word out. It's, it's, it's really incredible, and uh, we appreciate what you're doing, George, and uh, God bless you for this worthy project. Well, thank you, Kevin. I mean, it's, it's been uh, going on, going into my eighth year now of, of working through this and honoring families, and, and it's, you know, one of the most precious things we can do, you know, as Americans is to, is to give something back. You know, each one of us, you know, my son came to me uh, the day that he had joined the Army, and he said, Dad, you know, I've joined the Army. And I leave for boot camp on, on Saturday. It was a week later, whatever it may be. And the first thing I said, and I was pretty honest with him, he was a man of his own means, so he made his own decisions. I said, are you crazy? I said, there's a war going on. Um, why would you do that? And he said, you know, Dad, I know there is, and I believe that I can make a difference. And, Kevin, I will tell you that every parent in America – but rather somebody else's child died for their country rather than their own. That is a natural inclination because we know that men and women are going to lose their lives. So we would all rather that somebody else's son or daughter die for their country. And I say that someone, else, someone else's son or daughter is dying for their country. And the very least that we can do is say thank you. The very least, it doesn't cost us anything to be grateful. But how do we do it as Americans? That became my mission because I realized that there wasn't any way of doing that. No tangible, visible way of, of showing appreciation because we don't know who they are. Most Americans don't know somebody who lost a loved one. So how do you find them? How do you send a message to them? Uh, you don't know how. And so the honor and remember flag becomes that message of remembrance that you don't even have to know somebody to speak those words of appreciation that I believe are louder than thunder in their, you know, in their ears. Well, it's a very moving message and an extraordinary cause. George Lutz of Honor and Remember, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Kevin, for having me. And thanks for helping us spread the word. For more on Honor and Remember, visit honorandremember.org. You can also support Honor and Remember by texting the word FLAG to 91999. Text FLAG to 91999.